the mood of the nation. India Today's biannual survey with C Voter, which is telling you just ahead of the general elections what will happen in state by state to give you the big picture who's winning the battle for 2024. We spent the first hour dealing with the North Indian states. We'll now switch to the South. And remember, Rajdeep, there's been this big North versus South. Uh, effort that the opposition is making to try and build a narrative around how North Indian states are different from South Indian states. Do South Indian states truly feel and vote differently? We'll find out in this hour. Remember, we've given you the North India numbers in the first hour. 154 of the 180 seats going to the BJP-led NDA. India Alliance, just 25 others won. So there's a North typhoon. What's happening in the South? Is there a hurricane the other way around? Let's start. India may cyclone aata hai, sir. Cyclone, okay. The southern cyclone. Sorry, the southern cyclone in... And there are cyclones that take place in South of the country. We're starting with Karnataka, a state which, remember, went to the polls seven months ago in Vidhan Sabha. And interestingly, this is what it's showing. In terms of vote share, the NDA is way ahead of the India Alliance. Remember, there's a Congress government in Karnataka. 53% at the moment to the NDA, 42% to the India Alliance, others 5. This is identical in vote share compared to 2019. How is this translating into seats? Remember, 28 seats in Karnataka, 25 were won by the BJP last time. And we are saying the BJP is down just one. 24 from remember 27 now includes the JDS which has joined hands with the BJP there so the J, BJP JDS 24 that's down three but they're still holding its own India Alliance just four in a state where the Congress is in power and India Alliance means effectively Congress here others zero so you've got the first southern state giving bad news to the Congress party and Raj Chengappa, it's your home state. So why don't you kick off? It suggests very different verdict to what we saw seven months ago when the Congress won pretty decisively. But let's say, Rajdeep, it's not surprising in Karnataka. It's if history. you recall, it, 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 it started from Karnataka when uh, Rajiv Gandhi swept Karnataka, winning, winning about 26 out of 28 seats in, in 1984. Within three months, Ramakrishna Hegde was elected as chief minister. We're going to see the reverse uh, polarization happening in this case where for Karnataka they felt that the Congress was good, it was needed because the BJP government was not effective and therefore the voters likely to tilt towards the giving Modi the mandate because he did campaign extensively there, he did push if you remember the final phase a certain percentage up over there. So Karnataka and the other thing BJP has smartly done is tied up with the JDS. JDS. So the Vokliga vote, which would have made a decisive difference in Old Mysore and others, is getting split across these two. And secondly, if you look the way they have mended fences with the Lingayats, bringing Vijendra, who is the son of uh, uh, Yadurappa, into the picture, the BJP has tried to cover its flanks. But let us see. I mean, Shiv Kumar is a wily uh, contender. And you might see a little more seats going this way towards the Congress, if I, I mean. So, Yashwant, given the fact that Siddharamaiah and Shiv Kumar were in Delhi, and now you've got uh, DMK ministers, you've got Pinari Vijayan trying to hit out at the center for not giving enough uh, finances to the South, could that potentially become an issue? Because I was seeing in the South, there was a lot of traction, at least in social media, around this issue. As of now, it's just in its infancy. Could it build into a bigger headache for the BJP in the weeks to come? Uh, possible uh, because you see without the JDS BJP was in deep trouble and they were pragmatic enough to take that much of arithmetic along six months back our the same MOTM was showing BJP was in disarray because 10 percent approximately JDS votes of Vokaligas going along that now but that's the thing largely is, in old Mysore largely in old Mysore but the thing is that it's not just like they, it might be decisive in old Mysore but there are pockets in across Karnataka, particularly in North Karnataka, where even 5 to 6 percent of Vokaliga votes shifting the BJP way will do the magic. However, the point which you are making is a North versus South device and the campaign that we are now watching in, uh, in, in social media, that is an uncharted territory. Because I don't think any election whatsoever in the last 75 years, that play has been there. Barring the Tamil Nadu politics, Outside that, the north-south divide was never played like that. Uh, so that's we, important. Yeah, it's uh, very and, important. And this to issue understand. is still just about it's germinating. It's just germinating. Amitabh Tiwari, is there seamless that. transfer of votes from the Janata Dal secular 
to the BJP or do you think it might seem like that but on the ground it's not so easy to transfer? See, JDS vote is largely anti-Congress vote. See, the regional parties have been born out of anti-Congressism. And if you see the gap between India bloc and the NDA bloc, it's 11% and which, out of which 9% is largely JDS. So JDS has, has pockets of influence in not only the old Mysuru, but even the Bangalore region. There, the implementation of schemes has been very good. And Congress is trying to project the Karnataka model as their model. But historically, BJP has been strong in Karnataka. From 1919 to 2019, they have won all the elections barring 1999. And surprisingly, BJP today, even in 2019, is the single largest party in South of India. Because South of India, there are regional parties who dominate and not the Congress party. Sure, and that's also primarily because they won 25 seats in Karnataka yes. last time. So Rahul Verma, let's come back to our debate that we had when we discussed Delhi. That the same voter who seven months ago voted for Congress, possibly Siddharamaya as CM, apparently seven months later wants Modi as PM. As Raj Chengapa said, it's not unusual, but it seems to me the one state where it's pronounced in the south is in Karnataka. See, I, Modi is one of the biggest vote aggregators of our time. There's no doubt about it. And he pulls BJP's vote. He's more popular than the party itself. If BJP gets around 37% vote, Modi's popularity rating would be around 45-50%. So that means PM pulls the party. What I was trying to differ with, that the segment which changes vote into election is smaller than the claim that we try to make. Right. And think of it, like uh, Yashwan pointed this out, six months back, after the, like, when, so Karnataka elections happened in March, and the last MOTN had happened around August, BJP was not doing that well. See, what BJP is doing in every state where they were having trouble is making efforts, right? In Karnataka, they tried to get JDS. They made uh, a pact with Lingayat. On the other hand, and again, in Karnataka, what Amitabh had said in the beginning, the challenger is Congress. Congress seems not to be doing enough efforts in places where it's strong and credible. No, but uh, also opponent. imagine Sanjay Kumar, despite being the mighty force that they are at the moment, the BJP is willing to tactically cede ground everywhere. Yeah. And, and even also, in Western also, Uttar Pradesh to a party like the RLD, to the JDS where they think that they can make inroads so, in old And, and also Rahul, they called the JDS, uh, they called Kumaraswamy corrupt and a dynast. I mean, there was, it was very clear, we will never touch the JDS. You'll re recall no, they called Mukul Sangma, Sangma all kinds of things. Till the day yeah. the numbers so, so, came so out, the, the then they changed their mind. So the level of flexibility yeah. is very the great. Uh, you, yeah. you know, Sanjay Kumar, because this was one of the states where there was a potential double-digit loss for the BJP. So and also, also look at the irony. The party that is supposed to have the ideology shows political dexterity. The party with no ideology, so to speak, in terms of certain core philosophical issues is very rigid when it comes to tactical alliances, Sanjay Kumar. Uh, I think the problem with the Congress is that it is slow in taking initiative. I would say even lazy in taking initiative. And if you look at the BJP on the other hand, even if they realize that they are going very strong in 2024, but they don't want to leave any chance. And my own sense is that if you talk to any BJP leader, they are pretty sure that they are winning 2024. But why they are entering into all these alliances despite ideological differences, despite having, you know, given strong statement against the leader of those parties, is that they want to make, they want to big win. They don't let, only want to big 2024. Let's they take that, let, let's take that just a minute. Too. I'll come to you, Rashi, the moment. Mohan Kumar Manglam, national spokesperson of the Congress, Ajay Alok of the BJP. To both of you, first you, Mohan Kumar Manglam. You know, there's so much of talk of the Karnataka model. That the Congress is saying the guarantees that we have given will win us an election. The numbers at the moment are so, showing, at least in a Lok Sabha, that's not working. I spoke to Mr. Sidharamaya only yesterday. He seemed very confident. He also play, is playing this sort of discrimination against Karnataka card. But at the end of the day, our numbers are showing the BJP virtually repeating its performance of 2019, which would be hugely significant. If your numbers do bear out, Rajdeep, it would be hugely significant, no doubt. Um, but I think your survey was conducted between December, mid to January end, if I'm not wrong, which is at the height of the Ram Mandir propaganda craze that happened. And everything online, everything on TV, everything you turned on any channel was about the Ram Mandir. So I think definitely 
that sort of hysteria would have been captured somewhere in your survey. I don't think that they would find it easy to maintain that kind of momentum going forward. Uh, the other thing is the arithmetic of JDS plus BJP might look right, but I don't think the chemistry works at all. Just for example, uh, Kumarasamy was in a rally with the BJP and was wearing a saffron shawl, I think, and uh, the senior patriarch Devagoda came out and said that it would have been better had he been wearing JDS colors. So even something as small as that could be a flashpoint for misunderstanding between the two. The third thing is, you know, you have this national um, narrative of the BJP that is against nepotism, dynastic rule, etc. So I'm wondering how they're going to reconcile that with pushing Vijendra to the front as sort of the face of their party in Karnataka. You just can't reconcile the two in a national election. Uh, and like I said, alliances, whether that be with the JDS or with someone else, they don't really... Vote transference is going to be one of the major issues to watch out for in there. Ajay Alok, on Karnataka, the transferability of votes from the Janta Dal secular to the BJP and vice versa, the Congress would hope that that might not be easy. We saw in the last elections, but also the JDS's vote is typically an anti-Congress vote. It didn't happen when the Congress and the JDS were together. That's the concern. Will there be transferability of votes? Or do you think, especially in old Mysore, the BJP is now seeping the idea that it's okay to vote for the Kamal and that helps the BJP in a 15-20 year horizon as well, build in the one region where they are weak in Karnataka? See, one thing they are conveniently forgetting that Congress snatched almost 6 to 7 percent of JDS votes in the last Vidhan Sabha election, but they were not able to snatch our votes. Our vote percentage was quite the same, 36.2, what we got and what we got in the last assembly election. And JDS vote bank significantly reduced from 19, 20 percent to 13 percent, and this was majority or majority vote completely, it was minority vote which shifted to the Congress. Now there is, a there is a feeling of angst and there is a feeling of appeasement everywhere in Karnataka and how the Karnataka government is performing since they have uh, formed the government. So there is a natural chemistry and a monomy between JDS and the BJP and BJP and JDS combined together we are crossing 50% mark very sir, easy. Sir, sir, with due regard, and with sir, the dynamism with, and with the uh, uh, Ajay, Ajay, momentum Ajay, of the election regard, going on. Sir, sir, with due regard, when you say natural chemistry, seven months ago you were name calling each other. I mean, you were calling him a dentist, you were saying their family is corrupt, the Gouda family is corrupt. This was all your top leaders were going to Karnataka and saying this. So, is it that you've decided, Chunao ke liye kuch bhi? Forget the past, we have to win 2024. See, Chunao ke liye kuch bhi ne. We are a political party and we have to look at the situation at the ground. And of course, when we are not with JDS, why we shouldn't highlight their problem and what their corruption issue was. The Congress will also do the same. Now, no, since not they are with us, we have to see, look at the ground reality of the what kind of appeasement politics, what kind of appeasement politics is being followed in Karnataka. And that... No, are, they, are they now not corrupt? Kind of My direct question to you, to is JDS not Congress corrupt leader. now? Is JDS now no longer dynastical? Well, it is dynastical. As far as corruption, the matter goes, it's all in the court. If they are convicted, they are corrupt. And JDS okay. is there, mystical, there's no doubt about it. We are having a strategic alliance with them. They are not merging into BJP. Yes, and yes. Uh, uh, Rashid Kipwa, you wanted to make a yeah. point. I think, Rajdeep, if uh, uh, Yashwan Deshmukh's figure come true in uh, Karnataka, this would really reflect the mood of the nation. Here is a you know, government which is a proven track record, uh, performing well. The Congress party there is there on the ground. It's not a lazy party, at least in Karnataka. And in spite of that, if they lose and lose badly, that will tell you a mood of the nation, a pro-Modi wave. Second thing is, it will also create a huge political upheaval. You remember, there was a lot of rivalry going on between Siddharamaya, Chief Minister, and D.K. Shokumar. And this will, you know, become a big, big issue. So, that so are you saying the possibility of, of that government either fall falling government. as it did after 2019, or are you saying there could be a change in Chief Minister if these numbers hold? All kind of possibilities are there. If this happens, then, then uh, I don't see future of, for uh, Siddharamaya government there. Okay. From Karnataka, let's come to Telangana. I'm just trying to keep it moving so we're able to give enough time because otherwise we have very irate uh, viewers in a particular state that this is how important our state is and you didn't give us enough time. So let's just try and keep it moving. Let's come to Telangana. We look at the vote share numbers for Telangana first and then the seat share numbers. So in Telangana, the BJP thinks they will be able to gain ground. They had 
uh, four seats the last time. So when we look at the seat share for the BJP in Telangana, uh, our poll is predict predicting 21%, just marginally up, 1% up from the last time. Uh, the big jump here is for the Congress, which was at 30% last time, this time at 41%. Uh, whereas uh, the BRS and the other parties, which includes OVC, coming down to 38 from 50% the last time. So the big change really is the bump in the fortunes of the Congress and the decline in the fortunes of the BRS. How does this translate into seats? The one, the only sliver of hope that we're seeing of all the numbers that we've put out so far in the Mood of the Nation opinion poll are actually coming from the 17 seats of Telangana, where the Congress's tally is expected to go up from three, potentially to 10. That's up seven from the last time. The BJP was at four, could come down to three. That's down one. The BRS was at nine, could come down to three. That's down six. The AIMM stays where it was the last time. So OVC wins his seat. Um, three to 10. Now, from what I know, Amit Shah and the BJP big guns will be figuring out some way that they don't give this 10, they don't give anything, brother. You know, uh, Rahul, the fact is, honeymoons do exist. You know, I know that we are in a world where even living relationships are now looked at with a question mark, but a honeymoon is still fine. Uh, in the poll, the honeymoon is yeah. on. Uh, Whether it will be the, on in May or not, we don't know. This is the one state where at the moment, Yeshwan's poll seems to suggest that the honeymoon is on. They just won an election, what, two months ago? And uh, therefore, there isn't even enough time for any anti-incumbency as of now to build. That's the sense I get, Yashwat. That's Am I right? Because yeah. in the contrast with Karnataka here seems clear, uh, where the Congress is still very much the new party that has just toppled a 10-year-old uh, government. I think Congress is reaping benefit of the popularity of Revant Reddy. I think what is happening here is that in absence of any national leadership popularity or popular national leadership, Congress has to now look around for the popularity of their local leaders. And this is one state where definitely the popularity of Ramant Reddy no, is... So why is it working in Telangana but not Karnataka? It's not working simply because we have got two popular contenders. And uh, Rashid Bhai might be able to tell this, but I am dead sure that uh, the Deputy Chief Minister of Karnataka would not like Congress to win in Karnataka in Lok Sabha election. Because if Congress loses Karnataka in Lok Sabha election, that paves the way for him to become the Chief Minister. I think this is a bit uh, unfair because Mr. D.K. Shukumar and Radhi would correct me if I am wrong played a very big role even in uh, Telangana, the amount of you know, efforts he made there. So he's a, so far he's a disciplined soldier of the Congress. But, but uh, le let's be very clear. It appears one regional party is the one completely getting squeezed out here. Chandrasekhar Rao has virtually gone dormant since that defeat. That vote, the Congress seems to have captured to a, last, a large extent if these numbers hold. And the BJP has its pockets in, in uh, Telangana, but has not been able to truly spread across the state. Would that be a fair understanding, Amitabh, of these numbers? Yeah, I see. In a, in a largely bipolar national election, the regional parties tend to get squeezed out, and Telangana is one of the states. But it reveals a very fascinating insight is that Congress, wherever is it, is it gaining, it is gaining at the expense of regional parties, and that is the basic problem in that India alliance. It is gaining at the expense of BRS and not BJP. So how can it lead an alliance of regional parties where the regional parties have been formed out of anti-Congressism? TMC has come out of Congress. YSRCP has come out of Congress. SP has largely done anti-Congress politics. But, but it also shows uh, uh, there is no substitute for hard work on the ground, Rahul Verma. The fact is the Congress in Telangana genuinely made an effort in the last one year or 18 last six months. months. Yeah, I mean, six after months, the Karnataka but to election. be fair, you know, after Karnataka, they got momentum, Rahul. But there was a sense that the Congress yeah. in Telangana was slow, slowly at least, they were, they were there on the ground. They were more visible after Karnataka, no doubt about that, Rahul. But I think, would it be right to say that there is, there is a lesson there? You work hard on the ground, you throw up a leader like Revan Reddy who's able to connect and maybe, just maybe... Who knows where the future is? I, Telangana has been a Congress state. Indira Gandhi contested from Medak all those years ago. Uh, but at least in Karnataka and Telangana, you have a party on the ground. We all are taught this lesson from childhood that you have to work hard to get something, right? Zameen so, it's, huh, so, so, so it's not just for politics that you have to work hard. Sometimes, see, Congress also, not just because of the hard work in Telangana, but also some of the mistakes that BJP 
as well as BRS made in Telangana, which gave that kind of edge to Congress uh, in Telangana. And of course, Revanta is now very, very popular. BRS is not picking up from the defeat uh, it faced last time. And that's the advantage they are getting. And BJP has still not been able to figure out what its Telangana strategy is going to be, unlike in other states. So are they going to make efforts as they did in Karnataka or Maharashtra or Bihar uh, in Telangana or not? So that still remains to be seen. It, that's interesting, Raj Chengappa, because, you know, the, the BJP has also been caught in Telangana between do we play OBC politics, do yes. we project an OBC leader, what, you know, do, do we take strident anti-Muslim politics, will that take us forward? Somehow, for all the gains they made in Telangana five years ago, they've remained stagnant, one of the few states where they've not, you know, uh, multiplied overnight. I think the BJP is still shell-shocked by what happened, and the way the Congress came in and snatched what they thought was their territory, because KCR was on the decline, and the Congress smartly moved in uh, and got, got the prize. But I just want to make a larger point, which we did in passing reference, and we talked about, and uh, Rajdeep, you talked about, I, I think, this, is this whole thing that uh, Siddharamaya and uh, Shivkuma came to Delhi for, and you've seen these full-page advertisements about the South being neglected, not being given the due in terms of its money that was there. I think that is a potent force as it gets along, because it's also tied up with delimitation in some senses. That somehow the South is performing very well. Andhra's, I mean, uh, 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 Telangana is one of the states. Karnataka we talked about. And yet, you know, so this kind of thing can begin to erode on the Modi way factor. That no, so it is an idea. There can be no doubt about it. But does the opposition have the wherewithal to mount it into a meaningful idea, take it down to the ground in the weeks before polling? No, I'll give you a very interesting example. Mr. Pinray Vijayan is in town today. He led a protest. The Correct. Congress decided not to join it because the left is their prime opponent in, in Kerala. So there are internal divisions. But when I asked Mr. Sidharamaya, he said, yes, we would like to hold a convention of all the southern chief ministers soon. So they will play this no, card. And at least it. it's a card Sir, with yeah. some emotional connect. No, no, no but it's also Picho Suja. It, like, it's a real last minute kind of idea, sure. right? You To be able to take this idea, build it into something big, requires some time. But, and, but, and, but and the other worry is... The idea to begin with, you are only two months away from the election. Even if you play it well, South is only 130 or 140. No, but in, in those states Rao, it may do uh, well. Rao, no, but can I just make a point? If uh, in Karnataka they have, uh, you know, swallowed the <laughs> poison chalice and some, you know, had to drink from that one, it is because they know that if they lose Karnataka, the BJP, the sole Modi wave that begins to shrink, because at 25 seats, it is the one that tilts decisively uh, in terms of, you know, if moving from, say, whatever figure that they have now, if they are 303, if it starts dropping like they had last yes. time, they Just lose a lot. Chakabha, so that is why you will see because that I they are so concerned. Look at the, the, they are willing to compromise, whether it is in Bihar, as we've seen, in any of these places, despite the fact that they seem invincible, the BJP is insecure for whatever reason. And it is showing up in these places. I actually don't think it's insecurity. I actually now am convinced the BJP, as you saw with Mr. Modi talking about 370 and 400, it's like pushing your troops to try and conquer what is seemingly impossible. So you say Karnataka, okay, people are saying we are going to lose there. Put all your okay. might in Karnataka. Take the take Prime Minister's repeated trips to the south at a time when, you know, you would have thought they would say, okay, south is an area where we will not do well, suggest that actually they think south is a growth area. Here's so a it's fascinating. Is, okay, but, so one, uh, one seemingly impossible thing, seemingly impossible, but why not? When you are talking about the possibilities, if the BJP can go all the way to bring the JDS, if the BJP can go all the way to bring Nitish Kumar, why nobody is talking about possibility of BJP and BRS coming together? Look, the BJP How at the moment, zero plus zero. the BJP is hunting for allies all over. The BRS is a potential ally, but I think, I think they see Telangana as one of the states where they want to grow in the future. And the, to grow, they have to finish the BRS. See, once the regional party is finished, Make it BJP versus Congress in Telangana, advantage BJP. So that's the one reason why they may hesitate from taking on the BRS. And Chandrasekhar Rao is a wily leader. But, I think but, Kumar uh, Swami is just... Raji, Raji, but Raji, no, correct no, me, Raj. No, I just as, want to make a yeah, quick yeah, point yeah. of what you made. Yeah. The fact is that Modi came into uh, Telangana for an election campaign and said that KCR approached yeah. him for, to help out his son and uh, you yeah. know, the, so Joined there was India. this talk of an alliance that was building over there yeah. and of course 
as you we see, they are patched up with JDS. Exactly. Secondary. Okay. Yeah. 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 and then people in andhra will start feeling mm. bad and that's never a good idea when you're discussing telangana and andhra pradesh so andhra pradesh on your screen next 25 seats here i look at projected vote shares first uh, the ysr cp of jagan reddy had 49% vote share last time that's projected to come down to 41 that's eight down from the last time but the tdp which was at 40% the last time is now expected to go up to 45 remember we had uh, chandra babu naidu meeting the home minister recently are they picking up signals which before this poll the others hadn't but bjp obviously had its own polling on the ground uh, the bjp had very little vote share it's just marginally expected to go up the congress had very little vote share marginally expected to go up but the big change there is for the first time we are seeing the vote share of the ysr cp since jagan led his party to power after that famous uh, padyatra lesser than the tdp of 4% gap converted into seats fascinating here very very fascinating because remember chandra babu naidu was really given the rough end of the legal stick recently and there's a lot of talk amongst the tdp supporters that there is sympathy on the ground there that is reflecting in the numbers for the first time because from zero the tdp is projected to go up to 17 if you ask me of all that we've seen this is the one number that pops out of the screen and grabs my attention you know my my sense is uh, uh, mr amit shah has Uh, got a sense of what Yashwant Deshmukh's poll was suggesting, because why? Is no, it? Sanjay Kumar is surprised. You know, He's the ultimate. Because, 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 because you've got before I tell you know because you see Chandra Babu yes. Naidu no, was there. Yes. 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 Yes
aligns with the BJP, potentially Amitabh Tiwari has the advantage in Andhra Pradesh. Would you no, agree? With, with, one, with one caveat, with? before you go to Amitabh, then remember there is a solid 8 to 9 percent minority vote that's Muslim, plus a large Christian vote out there. And in a way, many of Jagan's advisors have been telling him, let Chandra Babu go with the BJP, it will allow you to consolidate That's that vote. But so it's, it's a but gamble. A counter, but yes, counter but to that, I mean, there is another set of data which generally, I mean, I, I keep on mentioning, I mentioned you uh, Punjab, Tamil Nadu and Kerala. I did not mention Andhra Pradesh in that. Even though Congress and BJP both are out of equation in Andhra Pradesh, but Pradhan Mantri Modi's personal popularity in Andhra Pradesh is way, way more than Rahul Gandhi's. So what I'm simply trying to say, even though BJP has no equity whatsoever uh, over there, there are certainly emotions attached on the Congress, anti-Congress and the old fault lines that the political fault lines are. And one recent development is Jagan Mohan Reddy's sister going to Congress. Now, if from here onward, Congress gains by virtue of Karnataka and Telangana, just even two, three points. That entire vote block is going to come from the Jagan Mohan Reddy too because they share the same vote. I mean, so, so the yeah. Congress jump is only going to damage Jagan. See, BJP has a problem of plenty here. So it will choose whichever party is going to con uh, win more num or higher number of seats. However, as you mentioned, Andhra is one of the few states where simultaneous elections already take place. And generally what happens is that whatever is the result in the Vidhan Sabha election is reflected in the Lok Sabha election. Andhra 2014-19, Telangana 2014, Odisha 14-19 and Sikkim 14-19. So this could be reflective also of the YSRCP facing pressure or anti-incumbency even yeah, at the local I can tell you limit. one thing very clearly. Chandra Babu Naidu is going to be on India tele television very soon. The TDP already picking up these numbers. They are flying with them. This, and frankly, yeah. Rahul Verma is the first piece of good news they've had for a party. And I think this is where legal overreach always is double-edged. You, know, you yes. think you're killing your enemy. Mm. It can potentially create sympathy and can help your opponents bounce back. Again, uh, something you should know, right? Anyone who is in politics knows this. But then politicians also are humans. They have egos. They have anger, right? And they, in their overreach, try to do something which may backfire. So we don't know whether uh, 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 TDP's gain are actually coming because of that legal overreach. This might also be happening because Congress might be gaining certain votes, which is coming from uh, uh, Jagan's party. And no, no, but that's overhyped. From one, if they're going to three, that's only 2% up. You can say it's 2 per The Jagan Reddy is losing 8% vote share. Only 2% uh, the Congress has sure. got extra from the last time. So remember... Jagan Reddy's graph at this moment is very clearly coming down. That's what this data represents. There's no running away from it. Mm. And uh, Chandra Babu Naidu would be doing a bit of a dance right now, but Sanjay. Chandra, but BJP's overtures toward Chandra, Chandra Babu Naidu also reflects, you know, the BJP and Prime Minister Modi. He wants to get a foothold in, in, in southern India. Because, you see, if he's comparing himself with Jawaharlal Nehru, with Indira Gandhi, with Rajiv Gandhi, with this... Congress Prime Ministers, you cannot be a Prime Minister of India yeah. and, you know, 100 but, and but it also shows, out of his bounds. But it also shows flexibility again. Here is a leader who five years ago tried to lead the opposition charge against and Prime Minister you. Modi, spoke angrily against the Prime Minister. So, Nitish did five, the same. The, and, and, and you're willing to embrace them all. So I think the Prime Minister is very clear that in politics there are no permanent friends or enemies, something that the Congress could learn. Think about it. Jagan Mohan Reddy comes from a Congress family. What stopped the Congress in all these years from making at least one solid overture to him to try and embrace? What, what do you do instead? You send his sister to contest against him, which clearly for him is a red rag. You've actually, according to which he said in the interview to us, you've divided my family. So any question no, of his family is already divided. But no, the fact that, but no, one minute. What stops the Congress? It's been 15 yeah. years now almost since Jagan left. You could no, have been an ego. There's a difference. Yes. No, my you know, point the is home minister, BJP, the Home Minister Rahul, often the says that he's ready to make that extra no, because, step of because, flexibility. Because the Home Minister because often says that the Prime Minister ED. believes this, that power mein honge, tab apni ideology ko hum implement yeah. Na, power mein nahi hai, kaise implement sure, okay, but, 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 Rahul Gandhi says power is poison. I think that is the fundamental difference. No, Rahul Gandhi says power is poison. Rahul made a very good point. has an ideological party. BJP claims to be an ideological party, but is a party of power. The Congress claims to be a party of power, but is now under Rahul Gandhi trying to become a party of ideology. You know, that I want people who are going to fight the RSS, come what may. So you've got a remarkable shift 
whether BJP wants to be the party of the government. Yeah, everybody knows what the BJP's ideology is. Half the congressmen don't know what the Congress's ideology is. They don't agree on the same ideology. No, no, Rahul. So that's the reality. Let's also admit Congress does not have ED. Can Sorry? I, can I, can I, can I Congress does not have ED. Sure, the ED is a factor uh, which uh, we will uh, discuss, of course, one, but that's a separate factor. One small point about TDP. See, yes. in, even in 1999 and in uh, uh, 2014, TDP only came to power when it aligned with uh, exactly BJP. Point. So TDP right. never that's came to power. That's the point I was trying to make. So, yeah. that, so yeah. TDP yeah. You know, that's, a, that's a very remarkable point, Rahul Umar. Thanks for putting it. Because in 1998 election, right. in the undivided Andhra Pradesh, BJP on its poll almost 20% votes, which forced TDP to join hands with BJP, and he swept again in 1999. So he made a very remarkable point. Can I, can I make a distinction? Can I make a distinction between yeah. Chandra Babu Naidu and NTR? NTR had the power to win on his own. Chandra Babu Naidu, when he took over the party, was not able to do that. That's the difference. Chandra That's Babu right. Naidu That's was true. leader than NTR did not That's lead true. allies. That's true. But every time he has, he has won, he has come along with the alliance of sure. the BJP. TDP two months ago was thinking of joining the India Bloc Alliance. After the 3-0 drubbing, mm. it has again changed its mind. So the regional parties, Hawa Kidar Bair Rahi Hai, are very no. cognizant of this. And there's another no, little I, piece of trivia, Rahul. There are two wings of Prashant Kishore's IPAC. Yeah. One wing is with Chandra Babu Naidu, and the other wing is with uh, Jagan Mohan Reddy. And, Kishore and uh, uh, a few weeks ago, Prashant Kishore was allegedly on a flight with Chandra ba or uh, with Chandra Babu Naidu or his son, and all speculation sort of uh, arose in uh, Andhra. Is he going to now align with Chandra Babu Naidu? He says he's not. But uh, if these numbers are true, he clearly knows who's on no. the winning side. Jagan didn't give the NOC. But are you surprised with these numbers? Are you surprised at Actually. all with these numbers, Sanjay Kumar? Actually. Yeah. No, about Andhra, we are all discussing TDP and YSRCP. But we are not discussing Janasena. I think Janasena is very important. If you just pull out Janasena from the TDP How much alliance, is the Janasena vote? It's roughly about, about four, four, four and a half percent. Four. Yeah, yeah but, but yeah. But if you pull out Janasena from the pull TDP, out Jan then Jagan Mohan Reddy is back in the game. That is so sure. And it, the is, it, is a, it is a situation like yeah. Bihar. Nitish Kumar at the center. There are three, two other players. You know, like RJD and BJP on one side. Whichever side Nitish Kumar goes, the okay. party is... But it's fascinating. Order. It is a fascinating I, verdict. I want to go across now to Tamil Nadu. And mm. Tamil Nadu is the one state where the UPA or the India Alliance, at least at this moment on the surface, looks uh, settled. The turbulence is on the NDA side because the AIDMK and the BJP are now separate just at this moment. And this game is changing so fast that I don't want to end up saying something which makes us look silly a few weeks down when people look back. Because that's the way thing, everything we're saying is just commentary at this moment. Things, of course, can change. So here is Tamil Nadu. I'll start with uh, the vote share numbers first. So, the NDA uh, projected to be 15% vote share. The India Alliance from 53 to 47. This is largely the DMK and the Congress and some of their smaller allies. Now, you've got the AI DMK in the others, uh, which is now expected, the others together are expected to be 38%. Let's look at seats, yes. So then a lot many smaller groups are there who are not yet aligned. DMK. So we do not know which side will they be in. So a lot of this. AIE DMK on its own is hardly about 30% at this point of time. So 8% are the others, 30% is the AIE DMK. Okay, here is the conversion into seats. Now again, the second state where there is some good news for the opposition alliance because like in Telangana, this time of course is the India Alliance. They had 38 seats the last time, <coughs> expected to go up to 39 this time. The BJP, while it may gain vote share, not expected to win seats in Tamil Nadu. And the AIDMK had just one seat, that too could come down to zero. So Tamil Nadu looking strong. Does the DMK stay fully with the Congress? Or could there be a twist in the tail there also? I think, Rahul, I'll be very surprised given the statements that Stalin has made at the moment that he will also switch sides. There's the ED factor that our friend uh, Rashid Kidwai mentioned. Yes, there are a number of uh, DMK ministers under the ED scanner. But I find it difficult to believe that it will happen before the election. What happens post-elections, we don't know. If the Congress completely collapses, many of these allies of the Congress today could go in different directions. But I think there's a general sense, and the poll may well bear it out, Yashwan, that these, this is the one state 
where the Prime Minister's popularity is much less than it is nationally, even though he's made the effort uh, repeatedly to go to Tamil Nadu to identify himself with Tamil culture, the Sengal, uh, when the new parliament was inaugurated. So the BJP, as always, continues to see Tamil Nadu as this sort of bridge too far, which they want to one day uh, conquer. But no, look at the effort he makes the, with the Kashi Tamil Sangha. Yeah, but I, my sense is the EIDMK's collapse over the years That's right. has, has only consolidated the DMK and has put the BJP in a difficult position. Do we try and occupy the opposition space or do we tie up with the DMK? Yes, in the either ways, you know, the vote share increase is not going to result in the seat conversion. So is there a vote share increase substantially? Yeah, uh, yeah it's, a, it's a vote share increase substantially. It could be further because, as I said, many of those smaller splinter parties might still go this way, that way, or the NDV. We do not know. No, is uh, the BJP I, gaining or is the AIDMK gaining this plus it's 3%? The, it's the BJP gaining. AIADMK is not uh, is going down and down and down all the way. And by the way, AIADMK is counted in others in this uh, calculation. It's not in counted in the NDA vote share for that. Uh, yeah. no, but so you're saying, saying a 15 percent? Just a minute. You're saying a 15 percent vote share is for the, a for BJP, the BJP and the other perceived alliance partners of the BJP, and that's not a very, very uh, uh, big number. I tell you why. In 2014. BJP actually contested with his alliance all alone, not being part of AIA, DMK or DMK, and they polled 18%, which is a decent enough number. But that vote share, just like Kerala, as I mentioned, BJP almost touches approximately 20% in Kerala. In Lok Sabha. But, in Lok Sabha, but zero seats. It doesn't really matter. Three states where Prime Minister Modi has actually bent over backwards, I would say, in order to accommodate the political sentiment, Tamil Nadu, Kerala and Punjab, the gap is reducing. They are gr having a growth of organic level, I would say, but unlikely to convert into seats. Rahul, is there any possibility there's a buzz that the Prime Minister could contest from Kanyakumari as a second seat? No, so there there's are, a buzz that, you know, he wants to sort of, he wants to bridge the north-south divide himself. One seat in the north, one seat in the south possible. You know, but Rahul Gandhi also showed some sense of weakness when he picked Vainad. The Prime Minister may not wish to go only for the reason that if this north-south divide picks up mm -hmm. and for some reason they end up on a shaky ground, you don't want to expose the man who's supposed to be invincible to any form of threat. Therefore, will they take that risk? Yeah. No, they will go all out to shore up their fortunes in Tamil Nadu. Remember, the BJP is the only party at this moment which has a 20, 30 year horizon on things. When I speak to top BJP leaders about, say, the strategy for Tamil Nadu or say, why don't you just patch up with the AIDMK at this moment, it might make it easier. They're saying, you know, we want to end Dravidian politics, not just about coming to power at this moment, it's also about a larger political, social, ideological fight where we want to integrate the country. I mean, at least they're talking that language yeah. and then pushing in that direction. Right. Oh, now, like the Chinese have a 20, 30 year horizon, the Congress doesn't even know what they're doing tomorrow. Raj, where do you therefore see the DMK being? You know, if these numbers hold, the DMK will presumably be, if not the second largest party, certainly the third largest party once again. Does the DMK remain where it is with all the ED pressures that we are we speak about? Other allies are slowly drifting away from the India Alliance? Or is there, you believe, a chemistry with Rahul Gandhi and the Congress that Stalin intends to cement? I think you have to look at what he gains. If it's only the ED that is putting pressure uh, and how deep that pressure is, one has to look at. But funding, yeah, but fundamentally Tamil Nadu doesn't believe in this one nation, one party, one nation, one language. So there's been that protest going on from the 60s. The more the BJP tries to emphasize all these uh, things, and let's not forget uh, Prime Minister Modi had, you know, as part of the temple run, went right down to Tamil Nadu and done, did two, right. two temples out there to assure them that, look, the, we care as much, uh, not just of, uh, of the Ram Mandir, but all your uh, tradition and culture. So at the moment, I don't find the reason why Stalin should be switching Unless there's some inside information. No, also, the given the comments that Uday, Uday Nidhi Stalin has made about Sanatan and, Dharma, I presume the BJP can't be then seem to be embracing them right away. Yeah, and the Tamil culture and the fact that anti brahminism had ruled for and continues to in many senses, it's going to be difficult for the BJP. It'll get this 10-15%. Mr. Modi's popularity is there and we need to see that. Okay, let's turn then to the final state uh, in our southern uh, sojourn, which is the lovely state of Kerala that often marches to its own beat. Take a look first at vote share. If elections are held in 2024, what happens in Kerala is the UDF, that's the Congress-led front, 
46% vote share, LDF 32%, 14% back, NDA 17, others 5. How is this translating into seats? Well, it's virtually a repeat of 2019. Once again, a clear sweep for the Congress-led UDF. The best news for the Congress so far, apart from Telangana, is coming from Kerala. 18 to the UDF, just two to the LDF. But remember, both are part of the India alliance. So, No, but it's a big change from 2020, Yashwan Deshmukh, where you had the LDF come back to power. Now you've got, for some reason, very clearly, in a Lok Sabha context, anti-incumbency against the left and very strong pro-incumbency against uh, uh, the Congress. And if Kerala so, was India, yeah. Rahul Gandhi would be Prime Minister. Absolutely. If Kerala was India, Rahul Gandhi would have been not only the Prime Minister, he would have been a Prime Minister with Rajiv Gandhi kind of majority. <laughs> uh, you know, uh, but having said that, uh, I think 2019 numbers also came after a victory of left front in the assembly elections. And so that way, Kerala is a pretty much a split vote because they are voting for assembly level separately and Lok Sabha level. No, but what differently. explains that vote, Rajdeep? You know, it's very interesting. Uh, a few days ago, Kerala left leader told me, why does Rahul Gandhi have to contest from Wayanad? Can't he choose any other part of the country? We are his staunch allies in the India Alliance and he's coming to take us on in Wayanad. So I think... There again, people... He looks like a strong force in Kerala. No, so therefore, you see, the Congress is seen as a national party in Kerala. The left is seen as the regional party of Kerala. Mr. Vijayan is seen as the prominent chief, uh, the number one neta of Kerala. There may be anti-incumbency brewing against him also after eight years in power. But I think the main reason is the belief that the Kerala voter sees the Congress as a national alternative to the and BJP. GVL Narsimha Rao is now with us. GVL, the BJP was trying very hard to, on its own through the RSS to win something in Kerala. Yashwan's data suggests it's a bridge too far for this election. No, I, I think uh, we are very confident of winning some seats. I will not say we'll be a big force in this election because Kerala doesn't, uh, uh, election to election, the swing is not more than 2% or 3%. Kerala is a, is a state that moves very slowly. But certainly in this election, we, will, we are confident of and winning. And what about Andhra Pradesh, seats. where the Home Minister and Nadaji met <clears throat> both with uh, Chandra Babu Naidu also meeting with uh, Jagan Reddy, What's cooking there? I, I think these are political meetings that happen during election time. Khabar but though, certainly, sir. no, I think uh, you won't, uh, until it is anything is final, I think you will not know. So you're flirting with both parties, essentially? No, we are, you see, we have got support from both the parties as far as uh, parliamentary strength is concerned. Big, but as far as elections are concerned... But Naidu betrayed a, you, would you take him back? I think these are uh, decisions that party will take at, at, at the highest You come level. from this state, it's your patch. No, but, but there, these are political calls. That makes calls. it even is, more difficult for him is, to come back. <laughs> because it's his own patch. Rahul and Rajdeep, you see, these are, there are no emotional decisions here. Political decisions are always based on wisdom, political wisdom and uh, political sagacity. Business because you decisions. accused no me, emotion. you made some comment against me, or you called me names in a rally, therefore I will not tie with you. Can if I? That's, that's college level politics. We are. Can I just take it round this table though to ask that since we spoke of college level politics and Kerala strong student movement, how many people in this on this uh, table believe that Rahul Gandhi made the right decision by choosing Wayanad or was it escapism? Did Rahul Gandhi escape from the reality of trying to rebuild and revive his party in UP by going to a, a Kerala? Is that a mistake? Or is, is this a pragmatic decision to stay on in the Lok Sabha? Who wants to go? I think it was a pragmatic decision and Rahul is very comfortable. If you see his, uh, you know, even Bharat Jodo Yatra in Kerala, whatever he was doing, talking, you know, indulging in all kind of activities and all, he was very comfortable. He was what he is. So but you can't win India by becoming the Prime Minister of Kerala. To, to, you know, to, to take off from what was just said. That you've got to, instead of investing in rebuilding the party in the north, you're, you're building your base in Wayanad where your principal opponent is your India ally, the left. I think, yes, but these are not easy decisions. It's like, you know, Prime Minister uh, Narendra Modi contesting from Tamil Nadu. I don't think so. I, I don't think Prime Minister Modi believes or his party believes in any kind of bravado. No, but so, Rahul could have taken Telangana, he could have taken Karnataka. Why take Kerala, the one state where your ally is from your India alliance? 
Well, that would be a choice if we can. If we Is this KC Venu Gopal telling him take a safe seat? Why not large minority population? And that also is seen as a factor. You're choosing a seat with a large minority population. It gives the BJP, and they did Why it in not? 2019, you that you only want to contest no, no. a seat Has with you, a large minority no, no. population. What are you, what are you saying? Are you saying minorities are not? Uh, they're also as much as Indian. They're not Bangladeshis. Sure, but Why it gives the it gives no, no. the BJP an opportunity to play on the seeming weakness of the Congress. That the Congress is only I relying now on the minority given, vote. No, no. Given a chance, I think the BJP will also would want to be very comfortable with minorities simply because they are also you know bona fide voters governed by rule of law, constitution. Okay. Uh, uh, Rahul Verma, you agree that Rahul Gandhi did the right thing by picking why not? Uh, depends on what the right thing means, right? Like if the right thing is just about uh, uh, getting a Lok Sabha seat, perhaps, yes. If he thinks he can revive or, or uh, make the party very, very strong in South, that's also right, as Rashid is saying that uh, in Southern India, and, and even this poll is saying that Congress is actually gaining in South. If no, not, not in South, only in Kerala. Where in, in the South? In Karnataka, uh, BJP is doing well. In, in Andhra Pradesh, no, in the TDP and the YSR In Telangana, Congress is doing well. In alliance with uh, DMK, in Tamil Nadu, they would do well. So, so in that sense, it's not a bad decision. I think, should he look towards South as well as build the party in North? That's what a leader is supposed to do. Uh, Modi campaigns in North and South and East and West, right? As if you want to be a national and leader... I think okay, one, so what one, 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 liner, one liner I would say, he lost a meeting because he went to Why not? Yeah, well, well, what I was told is that they saw their polls in uh, Amethi suggesting a very tough fight, possibly losing. They looked for a safe seat in the South and picked Why not? So it was almost like an, a, a pro, uh, some kind of security which Rahul Gandhi was offered. That no, but imagine if he's your main batsman and he's looking for a safe which position. Is, which is my point. You yes, see, my, this is it. precisely my point, Rahul, right. that I would have... Yes. If you wanted to choose South, choose Karnataka, for example. Yeah. A state... Where did Indira Bellari. Gandhi go? Indira Gandhi went to no, Chikmagur, went to Meda. What is the so safe seat for Karnataka, uh, Congress in Karnataka? No, Mr. No, safe seat. I, am, I have no doubt that there could be potentially safe seats, okay. including potentially Chikmagur. But so, look, let's, at, look yeah. at the projected vote share and seat share of the South, because Rahul, I think it shows the exact opposite of the North. The vote share in the South, as per the mood of the nation poll, NDA 23%, India 41%, others 36 How does it add up in seats? NDA 27 That's just a small dip from last time. Remember, BJP got 29 out of 130. India 76 Slight up because of Telangana, others 29. But basically, you, are, you really have two Indias politically. You have the BJP dominant in North India and you have India Alliance doing very well in South India. So, whether we like it or not, there is a South, North, political divide in this country. What that, uh, what implication that will have with delimitation is going to be a big no, question in a couple of years from now. A couple this, of years from now. At this moment, we are focusing on what is the mood of the nation.